All right, hello everybody. This is the first of my tutorials on how you use a Raspberry Pi. In this tutorial, we're gonna be going over how to set up a Raspberry Pi 4 without attaching a keyboard and mouse. This is what's called a headless setup. For this, I'm gonna be using a Mac. However, using PuTTY, you can do the exact same thing on Windows. I've attached a link in the description on how to use PuTTY. So in this tutorial, we are going to cover how to set up a Raspberry Pi 4 with a complete headless setup which includes setting it up, changing the root password, and creating a static IP address for it so you never have to try to figure out what IP address your Raspberry Pi is using. You'll always be able to do it. First off, you're going to need some way to read the micro SD cards. For me, I use this. It's a pretty cheap Amazon card reader. And it's great for me because it's USB-C and it's got regular SD card, micro SD card, and a CF card, which is what my camera uses. And it's also got a HDMI and a VGA output. It really has everything I need for me when traveling, although it is a little bit slow, but it's got everything in one nice package. So I'm just gonna go ahead and plug my uh, micro SD card in here and then hook it up to my computer. All right, while that's connecting, we're gonna go ahead and navigate to the Raspberry Pi download section. I've also attached a link to this in the description below. So for this, you're gonna to want to install the Raspberry Pi imager for whatever OS you're currently using on the computer. So for me, I'm using Mac OS. I'm just gonna hit download and it's gonna download for a second. All right, so now that it's downloaded, we're just gonna go ahead and open up here. It's gotta verify it. And we can either drag it to applications or we can run it just off the disk image. I'm just gonna run it right off the disk image. I'm going to say, yes, I trust it. And it's gonna pop up with this super simple menu. So we're gonna choose the OS. We're going to be using just straight standard Raspbian for this. So click Raspbian and choose an SD card. This right here is the SD card that I've plugged in it's going to go ahead and format the card. Then it's going to write the full OS to the card. That way you don't have to connect to your Raspberry Pi using a mouse and keyboard. It'll just set up all by itself. So just hit write. So you've got to enter your password. And now it's going to take a while. As I said earlier, it's a pretty slow card reader. For the people using Windows, go ahead and download and install PuTTY. To remotely configure our Raspberry Pi, we're going to be using a protocol called SSH. It's incredibly common in networking, and if you've got a Mac, you can SSH via the terminal because Mac is based off of Unix. Then for Windows, you're going to have to install a client. For this, I would recommend using PuTTY. Overall, the steps between the two should be similar, except for one or two things. However, it's pretty simple to use. All right, so now that that has finally installed, we're going to go ahead and do one thing. We're going to have to first remount the ejected disk because we need to add a file titled SSH into the bin folder. This is because since an attack in 2016 using Raspberry Pis, Raspbian has default disabled SSHing, but if you add an SSH file into the bin, it will automatically enable it. That way you can still do a headless setup like we're doing here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna unplug it and plug it back in real quick to remount it. So as we can see here, boot has been remounted. So now we've just got to create a file titled SSH in this folder. On a Mac, it's easy. Just right click and say new terminal app folder. This will open terminal. If you don't know anything, we're gonna go over this in the future here. But with terminal, you can do things like touch to create a valid empty folder and just call it SSH. And now if we LS to list services, we can see right here, there's a folder titled SSH. In Windows, just right click in the folder and click new text document, and then just rename the file to SSH with no extension. 
All right, so now that that's done, let's go ahead and eject it and install it in our Raspberry Pi. First, you're gonna to wanna to take your Raspberry Pi and insert the micro SD card that we just installed Raspbian on and place it in the slot below. Now, insert an ethernet cable connecting your Raspberry Pi to the network. Finally, plug in the USB-C power supply and wait for it to boot up. This should have installed a completely headless Raspberry Pi setup. All right, so now that you have booted up the Raspberry Pi and connected it to the network, we're gonna go back to the computer you would like to use to set it up. For Macs, simply open Terminal. You can do this by hitting Command Space and typing Terminal. Terminal allows you to get into your file system and operate it from a command line rather than clicking. It's also the way we will be working with our Raspberry Pi. For Windows, you're gonna go ahead and use PuTTY to do this. So Raspberry Pis automatically create their own name server. So we're gonna SSH by typing SSH Pi at raspberrypi.local. Spell it correctly. So my Mac there was warning me that I had already SSH'd into a box called raspberrypi.local. However, it had a different authorization string tied to it. That's because I was testing this video earlier to make sure I could do it all, and that meant it had a new string. So all I had to do there was remove the line in the SSH known hosts file for the raspberrypi.local. This should not be a problem for you, but if it is, just do sudo nano and type in the path to the SSH known hosts and delete that line. It's very simple, but you should not have that problem if it's the first time you've done this. There we go. Now it says, hey, this is the first time you've connected to this. This is the fingerprint. And are you sure you want to connect to it? And we're going to hit yes. So the default password when you first set up a Raspberry Pi is Raspberry. All right. And we have just successfully SSH into our Raspberry Pi. So now we are at the root level and able to do whatever we would like to. The first thing we're going to want to do is change the default password from Raspberry because somebody could easily take over your Raspberry Pi and do malicious things with it because the password is known. It's out there. So this is really simple. Just type password. So we just type the current password, which is Raspberry and the new password. And so now we have updated our password successfully. It is now secure. So I'll give us some space down here now. All right, so right now our Raspberry Pi is just receiving an IP address randomly from our router because our router is set up to use DHCP. So if I type in IP adder, we can see that right here, my IP address is 192.168.1.67. But if I disconnect and reconnect my Raspberry Pi, that could change. We could continue to use raspberrypi.local. However, if we have multiple Raspberry Pis on the network, that could cause a problem. So what we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and do is assign it a static IP address. I would recommend first setting up your router to only give away IP addresses under 100. Every router will have a different way to do this, but there should be very straightforward tutorials. It's called DHCP Surfer. I've got my router configured on the subnet 192.168.1.x, and my router will give away IP addresses from 2 all the way up to 100. Then anything between 101 and 255 are for me to set up. So that way I know that my router will never give away an IP address I need. So say I sign the Raspberry Pi to 192.168.1.123 and my router happens to give away that address while the Raspberry Pi is not plugged in. Then when I plugged in my Raspberry Pi, it would be unable to obtain the IP address it thinks it needs, and so it would not work. 
That's why you wanna make sure your router will not give away these IP addresses. So once you've done that, we're gonna go ahead and set up a static IP address and it's really simple to use. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is figure out what the IP address of our router is. I already know mine, but it's a good thing to check. In a Mac, it's really easy to do this. Go to System Preferences, Network, and then simply find the router's IP address and write that down. Mine is 192.168.1.1. It will most likely be whatever subnet you're using, dot one, because it's the very first thing on the network. However, different routers could have different configurations. Now we're going to simply set up a static IP address. So the way you do this is within the dhcp.config file in the etc folder. So we're going to type in sudo because we need root level access, nano, which is our text editor, and then it is stored in etc dhcpcd.config. So right here, we've got the different host names and we're gonna scroll down until we see these commented out lines. So in this config file, pounds are used as comments. That means if we remove the pounds, they will be uncommented and therefore read. So the default static IP address that was in the commented lines was 192.168.0.10. As you saw earlier, I'm not using 192.168.0.x, I'm using 192.168.1.x. Therefore, I need to be consistent and do .1. Then, this right here is where I'm gonna pick the IP address. I'm going to use 192.168.1.105, and this backslash 24 is not something you need to worry about. Leave that as backslash 24 for all simple router setups. Your IP6 address, we're just going to go ahead and delete that because we do not need it. We have not gotten to the point yet where people are using IP6 and it's just gonna be confusing. Now we're going to set up the router to be the same as what we've already got. And we're going to use the domain name servers. These are space delimited. So the first one is gonna be the IP address of our router. Basically, that means if we need a domain name server, we're going to grab whatever our router uses. Then if that fails, we're going to go to 8.8.8.8, .8 .8, which is Google's DNS server. And then this right here is going to be a IP6 domain name server, which we do not need. All right, so once we've done that, we're going to do control O to write, enter, and then control X to exit. We basically did control O, writes it, enter, saves it, then X exits. And now we're just gonna do a sudo reboot. So the reason we just rebooted our Raspberry Pi there was to get the new network set up. So we're gonna just clear and give it a second to boot back up. Now, a couple of things are gonna be different when we SSH into our Raspberry Pi this time. One, we're going to be using that static IP address that we just assigned it instead of the raspberrypi.local. And two, we gotta remember our password is no longer Raspberry, but whatever we configured it to earlier. So now, let's see if it's booted back up. Another thing to note, the Pi is the default username for your Raspberry Pi. You can change this. And then when you're doing SSH, you do username at IP address. Now, my Mac is once again worried about this because it's a new fingerprint, but we're okay with it because we know it's new. And now we're gonna type in that new password. And boom, we have now successfully SSH into a Raspberry Pi with the new static IP address. All right, and that's all I've got for you. Stay tuned for the next video. Have a good one. Bye.